Aloha, everyone. Uh, my name is Jake Shimabukuro. Mahalo, and thank you so much for joining us today for this virtual December 7th, 79th anniversary commemoration of the attack on Pearl Harbor and the celebration of 75 years of peace. Oh, I still see, uh, I still see some people joining in. Um, let me say that one more time. Aloha, everybody. I'm Jake Shimabukuro. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is a virtual yeah. December 7th, 79th anniversary commemoration of the attack on Pearl Harbor, and the celebration of 75 years of peace. And I'd like to introduce my dear friend who's been working so hard, has not slept in weeks, but she's <laughs> the one responsible for putting this amazing event together. And she's streaming live from the University of Hawaii ROTC KIA Monument. Please welcome Stacy Hayashi. Aloha. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good late evening for everybody from around the world that's tuning in. Um, here we are at the University of Hawaii ROTC KIA Monument. And that's killed in action for those of you who weren't sure. Um, and there's a reason that we're broadcasting from UH, Roxy, because December 7th, 1941, uh, these, this is one of the places that it all started. Um, and I will let the people in our lineup tell you why. But before we get there, let's start it off with the national anthem and posting of the colors. So. Awesome. So Jake Shimabukuro performing the national anthem on the Mighty Mo. So the war ended uh, on September 2nd, 1945 on deck of the Mighty Mo. And so here we have Cadet Olsen to sing Hawaii Ponoi. Hawaii's uh, skate on. Hawaii Ponoi. 
na na i ko mo i kalani ali i ke ali i ma ku alani e ka me ha me ha e na ka wa e pa le me ko. Ma ku alani e ka me ha me ha e na ka wa e pa le me ka i e. Hey, that was Cadet Olson with the University of Hawaii ROTC. Um. And next, we have the invocation um, by a dear friend of mine, Bishop Yoshiaki Sharky Fujitani. He was a member of the Varsity Victory Ball, well, before the Hawaii Territorial Guard, which was activated on December 7, 1941, which was the University of Hawaii ROTC. And uh, then he became a member of the Varsity Victory Volunteers, who you'll hear about later. And then he was with the Military Intelligence Service. So uh, without further ado, Bishop Fujitani. On this most auspicious occasion, we gather to remember an horrific event years ago when our worlds were transformed from day to night. We come today in gratitude to reflect and reaffirm our trust and belief in each other and the power of friendship where a simple handshake means respect and unmistakable gesture of how human we are, for the world prefers the quiet of a tranquil life. Let there be peace. Namo Amida Butsu. Uh, Namu Amida Butsu, that's a Buddhist phrase. Um, yeah, and so now we have messages from uh, the Adjutant General Hara and Congressman Kai Kahele. Um, yeah. Aloha. I'm Major General Kenneth Hara, the Adjutant General for the State of Hawaii, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today. December 7th, 1941 was a horrifying day for Hawaii and our nation. However, the heroic actions displayed that day must be remembered forever. I want to personally thank all of the heroes, military, government workers, and private citizens alike that bravely responded that day. Mahalo. Aloha, this is Congressman-elect Kai Kahele from Hawaii's 2nd Congressional District. I am here today at the World War II National Memorial in Washington, D.C., a special place where our country honors and remembers all those who give the ultimate sacrifice in World War II. In Hawaii, we honor, recognize, and remember all those individuals especially our Nisei veterans, who on December 7th gave the ultimate sacrifice to our country. I'd like to end on this quote by President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who said, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, no matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people, in their righteous might, will win through to absolute victory. Mahalo.
Mm. So uh, thank you, Adjutant General Harl and Congressman Elect Kahele. Uh, before we get into our speeches, our remarks, I'd like to actually show you the photos of the KIA. And this is going to be a little tricky because my camera is kind of far away. So these are pic uh, Well, can we unplug here? Okay. I'm going to go without my sound here. I hope I come back. Actually, I don't want to do that. Actually, can you walk closer over there? As close as you can get. Um, so we're, we have a little laptop set up here. And <laughs> oh, never mind. You know what? We'll have to do our two stuff here. Let's, let's do it later. Okay. Let's. Sorry, those were the these, but anyway, those are the pictures of the KIA. So there are uh, seven varsity victory volunteers who, you know, gave their lives, and also Major Jack Johnson, who was with the 100th Battalion. He was killed in Monte Cassino um, in January of 1944, and he was a star football player for the University of Hawaii. So, um, where's Jake? Oh no, I'm I'm oh. still I'm still oh. here. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, okay. No, I just I didn't want to take it. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I need to show the I, yeah, we're kind of far away. Um, we'll, we'll try to do that later. But if we try to do that later, but if we can, then I guess we'll post it on Facebook or something. Anyway, so without further ado, I guess I'd like to introduce General David Bramlett. Um, he will tell you all about the VVV and the original hundred battalion. Aloha. Good morning from Hawaii. My name is General David Bramlett, United States Army Retired. And it's my honor and pleasure to speak this morning on uh, the 79th commemoration of December 7th, 1941. <clears throat> this was a day that impacted the lives of the greatest generation and frankly, the lives of our country. I'm probably typical of many in my generation with our family that fought uh, on behalf of our country to defend our country. My father spent three years in the Pacific with Air Group 9, was on carriers, the Yorktown, the Essex, the Enterprise, and the Lexington. My father-in-law parachuted into Normandy with the 101st Airborne, jumped again into Holland, and fought in the Battle of the Bulge at Bastogne. My uncle stormed ashore with the Marines at Tarawa, and my second uncle served with the Navy at Okinawa. And I am typical. And we commemorate those men who served, those men and women who served, by the way, my mother and grandmother worked in the It's important that we remember them today. And we remember the units that are so heralded for what they did. However, this morning, I'd like to talk to you about, very briefly, about uh, units that are less heralded, but frankly, are transcendent in their sacrifice for dedication and recognition for our country. And that, those are the units comprised of the Nisei, the second generation Japanese Americans, who despite the hostility and anger directed against them as a result of the attack here on December 7, 1941, they went and took the opportunity to serve. In fact, the 100th Battalion, the 442nd, and the MIS, Military Intelligence Service, uh, accomplished a record that's achieved by very few. In fact, the 442nd Regimental Combat Team is the most decorated unit in our history for its size and duration of service. Note that I said the most decorated, not one of the most, but the most decorated. And the Military Intelligence Service is credited with shortening the war uh, by perhaps two years and saving perhaps a million American lives for what they did. I'd like to talk about their story because their story began here on December 7th, 1941. And it began with high school, with college students, actually ROTC cadets. When the attack uh, commenced around uh, eight o'clock in the morning, uh, within two hours there were announcements made, all active duty report to their stations and an announcement, ROTC cadets report to the campus at University of Hawaii. And those cadets did when they showed up they were given a Springfield 1903 rifle, a clip with five rounds in it, and the sergeants had to find firing pins to put in their rifles 
so that they could be used. Oh, by the way, the cadets had never fired their Springfield Knight military. They were issued a helmet and a sold to establish a defensive position uh, at the base of the high ground behind the University of Hawaii uh, to repel Japanese paratroopers that were reported to have jumped into Hawaii and were on the high ground. Those ROTC cadets uh, reported to campus, uh, issued weapons, defended uh, their campus and the uh, territory of Hawaii. They were then later that same day integrated in the Hawaii uh, Trans Territorial Guard and were given guard positions throughout the island, all by the end of December 7th, 1941. The next six weeks, uh, these ROTC cadets were stationed all over Oahu guarding critical installations uh, that were important to be secured. Sadly, on 19 January 1942, they were summarily discharged. Their weapons were taken away and they were allowed no longer to serve the country. They were crestfallen, they were crushed. Uh, and later that month in January, while they gathered uh, at the steps of one of the buildings at the UH campus, uh, an ROT, uh, I should say, uh, an executive of the, the um, YMCA, Hung Wai Ching, approached them. Hung Wai had a great relationship with the cadets. He chided them, cajoled them, and said, come on, quit feeling sorry for yourself. Look for a way to serve your country. They were angry, they, the cadets angry and grousing and, and arguing back. He pressured them, why don't you petition the government to allow you to serve in some capacity? Surely college students willing to sacrifice our education to do whatever the country would need would send a great signal of your loyalty and your desire to help. Incredibly, 169 of the cadets signed the petition, submitted to the legal authorities, the military authorities, and they were accepted. And so by the end of January, this group, now called the Varsity Victory Volunteers, reported to Schofield Barracks, where they were attached to an engineer battalion. And for the next year, the entire 1942, they did whatever they, task they were given, construction, quarry work, road work, kitchen work, you name it, digging ditches, they did it to show their loyalty and their willingness to do what's necessary to serve the country. It impressed everyone that saw them. They established a record of hard work, dedication, and was to pay dividends later. Meanwhile, in 1940, the U.S. Army had federalized the Hawaiian National Guard. These men became the 298th Infantry on Oahu and the 299th Infantry on the neighbor islands. Thus, there were already over 4,000 Americans of Japanese ancestry or Japanese Americans in uniform, along with the rest of Hawaii's races serving in the military on December 7, 1941. The 298th was on maneuvers at Bellows that morning, and they shot back at the attacking planes. The following day, on December 8, 1941, elements of the 298th including future Hunter Battalion member and member of Merrill's Marauder, Thomas QP Sabota, captured the first POW from a scuttled Japanese midget submarine at Bellows Beach. Later in May of 1942, all the AJAs were pulled from the 298th and the 299th, and they formed the Hawaii Provisional Battalion, which became the Hunter Battalion separate. Uh, to Camp McCoy, where they trained as a unit for six months, and then to Camp Shelby, where they, Mississippi, where they trained for six more months. Their record in training was so exceptional, so outstanding, by every report, they were tough, dedicated, and, and prepared for combat duty. It was their record, and the record of the VBB back in Hawaii, the hard work that they saw with these college kids willing to do anything, and the 100th Battalion, it's, they were so named, this Nisei Battalion, uh, that the Army said, why not form a regiment? And they did, and that regiment was to become the, the 442nd, that you'll hear about uh, later. Uh, the 100th Battalion then deployed in August of 1943, joined the 34th Infantry Division in North Africa, and then became the record that uh, has few parallels of any in the history of one battalion fighting in Italy and fighting anywhere. Landing in Salerno, they moved out to Castelvetteri, 
where the first in Nisei fell in combat, Sergeant Joe Takata, killed in action, but posthumously awarded the Distinguished Service Cross, the nation's second highest award for courage and courage in gallantry in battle. That sacrifice by Sergeant Takata made, became emblematic of the Nisei for sacrifice, courage, and willingness to accomplish the mission. They continued on to Benevento, to San Angelo uh, Delifi, to Sarasuola. Sarasuola was a battle, nobody knows the name, but there three members of the 100th Battalion earned and were later awarded the Medal of Honor. Yukio Hashimoto, Alan Hawada, and Shizuya Hayashi. Incredible as courage and gallantry in, in great abundance. Crossing the Volturno River three times, fighting at the Rapido River in Mount Cassino. Mount Cassino is memorable because of the brutal fighting. The Nisei, the 100th Battalion, waded across two miles of flooded Rapido River to launch an attack at the foothills at the base of Monte Cassino. Correspondents covering that battle nicknamed the 100th Battalion the Purple Heart Battalion for the sacrifice. At the end of the fighting, the 100th Battalion had but 17% of the original 1,400 <clears throat> who had sailed from Hawaii uh, in June of 1942. When they returned uh, back to Anzio, they met the 442nd. They became then part of the 442nd and retained their designation 100th Battalion in recognition of their achievement. And henceforth, the regiment will be known as the 100th 442nd Regiment. Let me stop here and just uh, say, as we remember Pearl Harbor, remember, Pearl Harbor uh, remember all the units. I've mentioned two that are, are very special because they started here, they started the legacy uh, that will continue on for the Nisei soldier in World War II. As we close, as I close, I should say, it's important, I think it's significant to remember the motto of the 100th Battalion. When they were formed, the army gave them a motto. They said, your motto will be, and I quote, be of good cheer. Uh, the battalion rejected that motto and their battalion commander, Colonel Ferrant Turner, uh, went back to the army and said, no, our motto, the 100th Battalion will be, remember Pearl Harbor. And we should, and we should remember the 100th Battalion, the 442nd, the Nisei soldiers, and all of those of the greatest generation who fought so hard, and it's why today we remember Pearl Harbor. Thank you. Wow, Stacy, that was that was amazing. What an amazing uh, um, to hear from General Bramlett. You know the whole story. And Stacy, I think you're you're muted. You have to um, unmute. <clears throat> <laughs> but Thanks. but I wanted, yeah. I wanted to share just because I think um, you know uh, for those of you out there that that don't know you know Stacy uh, for 14 15 plus years you know she she's just had many, such many a such years. a passion you know for many for many long years veterans. and she um, and some of the clips that you that you saw during uh, General Bramlett's um, you know when he was uh, during his video were clips from Stacy's uh, movie Go For Broke and um, and it's really an amazing uh, it really she really captures the story you know the uh, the origin story of these incredible individuals these heroes and um, and um, yeah I just I, I just think it's uh, it's incredible what all the work that you do and I just also want to say that the movie uh, was uh, was a collaboration with the actual Nisei veterans. You know, they um, they were all friends of hers, and uh, they just adore and admire her. And um, so, it truly is an honor to to be here with you doing this, Stacy. Really. Aww. And for those of you who have not seen the movie, Jake wrote the soundtrack, and he has his acting debut. <laughs> he plays Saburo Maihara who was with the 100th Battalion and was sadly killed in action on his 30th birthday, leaving behind his wife and daughter, young daughter, Nikki. Oh, thank you. Um, that, that, was, that was an honor. You have to see Stacy's Stacy's work. Oh, but <laughs> Stacy, I wanna I wanna apologize earlier before we go into the next video because I, I had my I had a Santa Claus hat on. Oh, earlier, that's okay. And I totally forgot that I that I 
with it on. I don't know why. <laughs> and I and I just I just didn't want it to come across disrespectful, you know, to to the event because I was with my sure. kids earlier and I just and they're still there. I forgot I, forgot I had it on, <laughs> so I'm I'm sorry. And then when I realized that after the the national anthem, I quickly took it off and tried to change. <laughs> But I, I just apologize no you know, worries, for everyone no out there because I, I meant absolutely no no disrespect by that. So thank you. Yes. And so, so Jake has his kiddos. Um, oh, and, there, and there's Cole. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So next up, we have our keynote address. He's Medal of Honor recipient, Hiroshi Hershi Miyamura. of Japanese ancestry should always remember the sacrifices made by our young men that served in the 142nd Regimental Combat Team during World War II. Gallup was a town of American, uh, not American, but immigrants from all over the world their father came to Gallup to work in the coal mine, and we grew up as American citizens until December 7th, 1941, when the war, Japan bombing Pearl Harbor, and plunged us into the war, Second World War II. We uh, found out that the great citizens of Japanese ancestry were reclassified as enemy aliens. And when I got up to the recruiting office to enlist in the service, I was told I could not enlist in the service or I could not be drafted. I am an enemy alien. So I had to go back home, return to school and wait my turn. I guess I didn't know what to do else to do. So I did join the new program that this high school started and it was IRTC and uh, as time went by I finally got my draft notice in January 13, 1944 and I was sent to Port El Paso, Port Bliss, El Paso and uh, I was inducted into the service and told the report to Camp Lightning, Florida. And uh, I would be joined by other people of Japanese ancestry. And there would be two companies that was formed that would begin training, basic training there. And after the 17 weeks, we were told to report to the 442nd Regimental Combat Team based in Camp Shelby, Mississippi. And there we were assigned to various companies of the 442nd Regiment of Combat Team. And that was the first time I ever heard of the regiment. I did not know anything about the 100th Battalion being the first battalion of the 100th 442nd Regiment. But I was assigned to Company A, the 442nd, and was told that we would be boarding trains within a week to head out for the European theater. When that week came, we were boarded the train. Seven of us, 18 year olds were called off the train. And we wondered why, and we were told that our government had passed the law, you had to be 19 to go overseas. So they left us behind, reassigned us to various 
companies of the regiment that were beginning to start a new phase of basic training. And I was this time assigned to dog company, a heavy weapons company that was part of the 100th Battalion. I had not heard of the 100th Battalion, but uh, we were to undergo 13 weeks of basic training. After 13 weeks, I went given a furlough, briefly met my wife to be, and then went back to Camp Shelby, boarded a train, and this time I went to Fort Bliss with the unit. We uh, went under training another couple of months there, and before we boarded the ship to go overseas, we were given a full field inspection and a physical. And during that physical, a general, a colonel uh, that was examining me asked if I knew I had a hernia. And I said, no, sir, I did not. And does it bother you? No, sir. He said, well, we're going to send you back to Camp Shelby Hospital. You report there and they'll fix you up. And that's what I had to do. The fellows uh, went on overseas. I reported to Fort Camp Shelby Hospital and had an operation. After I uh, convalesced was done, I uh, was assigned to a company that just finished basic training. And again, it was Dog Company of the 100th Battalion. And they were getting ready to go overseas. So I was told I would be joining them. And we boarded, after that, we boarded the train again, went to Fort Meade, Maryland. And before we boarded the train there, we were given that physical. I passed everything there. So we later boarded the ship at Norfolk, Virginia, five days out of Norfolk of uh, uh, reaching uh, the European shores, we were heard over the loudspeaker, ship's loudspeaker, that the war in Japan was over. No, Europe, the war in Europe was over, I'm sorry. And um, we were to start undergoing basic training for the South Pacific theater of war. But before we got into the training, the war in the Pacific ended. So we just did the occupation duty. Came home with the regimental colors in June of 46. And that's when a lot of us, after marching a review for President Truman, we were told we were to be discharged there at Fort Meade, Maryland. And uh, many of us that didn't see combat with the regiment enlisted for three years and then were sent home. I was sent home. In the meantime, I went to school for a year, got married. In 49, an officer came by and asked if I would like to re-enlist for another three years. And uh, I said, yes, I would. And then... 1950, June of 1950, is when the North Korean War invaded South Korea. Once we be began training, I ran into the uh, mainland Japanese American boy from the Pacific Coast, and I was shocked to hear the stories about people that were put into these internment camps throughout the United States. And they, our government, asked for volunteers out of those internment camps. And many of the young men volunteered from the camps and are also ostracized by their own people for joining the camp when our government had put them into these internment camps, but uh, they uh, were in the minority and many of the young men 
were from these uh, internment camps. I, I, I learned so much about what happened during that period because when uh, living in Galton, New Mexico, we never heard news about anything really except sports or whatever we were interested in. We didn't uh, pay much attention to the war really as much as we should have. But when I saw these, uh, I remember, recall when I saw train loads of Japanese Americans stopped in Gallup, New Mexico with shade drawn. And when they lifted the shade, they, I recognized them as people of Japanese ancestry and wondered where they were being sent to. And I later found out that they were all sent to various camps throughout the United States. And that was the first time I ever heard of that. Wow, that sure. was amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 the amazing. Is amazing. 95, Ninety-five years old. Years old. And uh, just, uh, just for the people who are a little bit confused, he actually he earned his actually Medal of Honor, Honor in the Korean War. War. So, so you didn't did it that, that since, but but that, but that was his experience, experience for World War II. Um, yeah. yeah, he's yeah, made. Stacy, this is this is so cool. You know, for everyone watching. Uh, I mean, for, for a lot of us, I mean, for everyone, you know, here growing up in Hawaii, the Nisei veterans, you know, the 100th Battalion, the 442, the MIS, you know, they were, um, they were our heroes. I mean, I remember, and I've shared this with Stacy many times, you know, that, you know, when I learned of their story as a kid, um, I realized that, you know, being a being an Asian American, you know, living in this country today, you know, I have a much better life because of the sacrifices that they made. So, uh, and you yeah, got just, some just cold great. water too. Cold water too. <laughs> 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 so yeah, Stacy is referring to us. Uh, so I, I shared this this uh, story. Um, when I was growing up, I, I lived on on Lawiki Street uh, in Honolulu, Hawaii. It was uh, across the street from Alawai School, where, where I went to school, and. Um, and we lived in this little apartment, and on the uh, on the same block was Club One Hundred, which was the clubhouse for the veterans of you know of the Hundredth Battalion. And when I was a kid, we, you know, we didn't know what that was. So my my buddies and I would just ride our bikes around the block. And inside Club One Hundred, there was a there was this ice cold water fountain. It was one of those water fountains that had a, had a refrigerator <laughs> inside, so it kept the water super cold. And we would, we would, uh, so we, we'd ride our bikes around the block and then, and then we'd sneak into the clubhouse because we had no idea what it was and we didn't know if we'd go in there or not, but we would sneak in and, and, and drink water and then run out and take off. The, the sign does say private, private club. club. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it wasn't until years later that I, that I realized, you know, the significance of that building and, and the, and the clubhouse and, and so when Stacy and I had had met, you know, years ago, and I shared the story with her, she's like, "I'm taking you back to the clubhouse, and you got to share this <laughs> story with the veterans and their families." And so we 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 went. Uh, how many years ago was that? But she took me back. Ah, uh, that, that was like 2009, 2009 I think, yeah. January. So we went back there, and uh, and I got to 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 thank them and and meet them and uh, and actually do a little mini concert for them. So. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> that was that was an amazing. Uh, I'll never forget that. So thank you, Stacy. That was so much, you know. And and actually, I just posted a picture of us and the water fountain. Oh, did you? Yeah, and I'm I'm wearing a UH shirt actually. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. So, yeah, um, that's actually good. So, what is, so what is next? next? Oh, I want to show you the KIA guy. Uh, I had, I had them bring bring them some toaster. Oh, the, nice. Yeah. So, this, so this is the power of Rodney. Hiro Yoshi Tomita. Akio Nishikawa. Daniel Daniel. Jen, Jen Hatsukinen. 
and he was actually Danny Noy's best friend. And he was killed in action. Um, like the first battle, well, but here, so that was very sad. That was when the 100th Battalion had to come in and kind of save them. Am I muted? Oh. No, no, you're you're good, Stacy. You're good. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I couldn't I couldn't hear myself. <laughs> um, and next to Jakarta Chenian is uh, Robert Murata, and then Grover Nagaji, and then the last guy who's Howley is Jack Johnson. And so he was with the 100th Battalion. He was killed in action in Casino, and he is still buried in Netuno, Italy. Um, there are two guys on the end. I'm I'm not disputing that they're with the 100th, but I, I am not familiar with them, and they're not on the, the, the World War II monument, okay? So anyway, uh, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to show that to you before we go on to our next item, which is actually uh, very heartwarming. So um, it's messages of friendship and peace and appreciation from around the world because um, so if you, well, you might not know this, but on September 2nd, 1945, you know, that's when the war ended. And, um, and this is the 75th anniversary of the, of that, you know, event. And so we were in our second lockdown in Hawaii. So we, there were a bunch of veterans coming in and, and they were told to please not come because we couldn't guarantee their safety. And, and so they were very disappointed, you know, of course. And, and. But, you know, better safe than, you know, sick or worse. So um, so this is kind of our attempt to sort of make up for that, you know, um, celebrating the 75 years of peace and friendship. So and these, this, these are from like all over the world. And it, it's watching this just it brings tears to my eyes because it's it's so amazing how big of an impact I mean, not just our vets from Hawaii, but all the vets have had in the world. To the 3,147 men of the 100th Infantry Battalion, who ask only for the right to be called Americans, not Japanese Americans, a right they so richly earned. Out of their ordinary lives, they met the crisis of their time, not only with courage and uncommon valor, but also with grace and forbearance. Hi, my name is Richard Watanabe, and I'm a volunteer docent at the Japanese American National Museum in Los Angeles. Let's all take a moment to remember those who serve, who have served, and those who made the ultimate sacrifice. Hi, I'm Stuart Feldman, and I'm here at the Roseville, California, Placer County Memorial to the World War II Americans of Japanese ancestry who served in World War II and those who were interned, residents of Placer County, California. And we have this monument, which was completed in 2013 and dedicated in honor of those Japanese Americans. I thank you all veterans for your service. I'm Paul Woodange, a British historian living in Normandy, France. I want to thank everybody who served for the Allied forces in World War II, those who survived and those who fell. Thank you. Hi, from Japan. This is Nagasaki, where one of the atomic bombs devastated the city. My father is was a 442 veteran, Eddie Yamasaki. I'm so glad to be able to celebrate this peace for 75 years, thanks to the veterans and my father. Honoring them all, thank you.
Nous sommes ici aujourd'hui en tant qu'adjoint au maire à la ville de Bruyère et président du Go for Broke French Club et du Chemin de la Paix de Bruyère avec France Deschazeaux, qui est la fille à Gérard Deschazeaux, le cofondateur du jumelage Bruyère Honolulu avec Sandy Hall, qui a été créé donc en 61 et nous fêterons le 60e anniversaire en 2021. Nous sommes ici parmi toutes ces belles fleurs, comme vous pouvez le constater, pour commémorer comme chaque année la libération de Bruyère, de ces jeunes soldats hawaïens venus de très loin, au risque et au péril de leur vie, pour nous rendre notre liberté à Bruyère et ses alentours. Nous les remercierons jamais assez. On leur dit encore un grand merci et il faut qu'ils sachent que notre amitié restera indestructible. Et pour preuve, il y a eu ce jumelage magnifique entre Bruyère la Petite et Honolulu la Grande. Ces deux villes tellement disparates qui aujourd'hui lient et ont créé une amitié, comme je l'ai dit, indestructible. Et pourquoi pas rêver un peu notre souhait ça serait de faire un jour et de créer un musée en l'honneur de ces jeunes soldats. Mais enfin, l'époque n'est pas là. En attendant, je vous dis mahalo et aloha. Oui, Martial Hilaire, député mayor of Bruyère and president of the Trail of Peace and Freedom and Go for Broke French Club and myself, France Deschazeaux, Gérard Deschazeaux's daughter, who with Sandy Hawk has been the co-founder of the city sistership between Bruyère and Honolulu. Bruyère, small town in France, Honolulu big one over there. We are honored to commemorate in the middle of those flowers, the young soldiers who came from far away, risking their lives to save Bruyere and surroundings and to fight for our liberty. We have a dream. This dream is to create a museum to honor once again, to create a lasting honor to those soldiers who gave us freedom. Be sure that the deep and tight friendship existing between Bruyère and Honolulu will last forever. From the bottom of our hearts, mahalo and aloha. Aloha, Aloha from Japan. Japan. I am Hidenori Koda. And Taisuke Tsurumi. We are the director of Hawaii Japanese American Soldiers. Also in the NCO of Japan Self Defense Force. Even though we are bitter enemies during the war, we have so much respect and appreciation for the way the 100th Infantry Battalion from Hawaii showed their loyalty to their country. We also would like to express our sincere gratitude to the military intelligence service veterans who helped to rebuild Japan after the war was over. An MIS veteran from Hawaii, Mr. Ujiyo Takaki from Wailua, gifted a Jeez Cherry tree to help motivate the spirit of Japanese people. We still tend these trees today and keep the precious meaning of friendship close to our hearts. Thank you so much. Mahalo. Mahalo. Hi. This is Chris Tashima from Los Angeles. 
I play Shigeo Yoshida in Go For Broke, an origin story. Thank you to our World War II veterans. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your sacrifice. You will always be remembered. I'm David Lassner, president of the University of Hawaii. And today I want to remember and thank the Varsity Victory Volunteers. They were a group of UH ROTC students called to service on December 7th, 1941 as part of the Hawaii Territorial Guard. Six weeks later, they were called out of their pup tents at 3 a.m. and told that the Japanese Americans were being dismissed as four seas or enemy aliens. To show their loyalty, they petitioned the military governor to use them as a labor force. While they were not permitted to bear weapons, they wielded shovels and tools. And for almost a year, this group of UH students, known as the Varsity Victory Volunteers, or VVV, dug ditches, built structures, whatever was needed, until the War Department relented and formed what became the widely renowned and respected All AJA. 442nd Regimental Combat Team with the VVV at its core. Today, we remember their unwavering loyalty of the Varsity Victory Volunteers, students in the face of racism, their bravery and ferocity in the face of danger, and their love for their country. UHROTC was awarded with a battle streamer, distinguishing it as the first and only senior ROTC unit in the United States to engage in active duty during World War II. Aloha. And hello everyone, my name is Tim Gray. I am the founder and filmmaker with the World War II Foundation. Um, we just wanted to take a few minutes as we recognize this solemn anniversary um, to say thank you to all of our veterans. And of course, thank you to the people who preserve the memories of Pearl Harbor uh, at the USS Arizona Memorial, the USS Missouri, and of course the Pacific uh, Pearl Harbor Aviation Museum now. Um, and um, just to take this opportunity to say, we can't believe it's been almost 80 years since Pearl Harbor. Um, it's been a very difficult year for everyone. Um, we've had two trips to Pearl Harbor canceled this year, our second one just within the last couple of days. So unfortunately, because of COVID, um, we will not be able to be on Oahu to mark the December 7th um, observation of the um, anniversary. But we wanted to let you know that we're all thinking of you and appreciate everything everyone out there is doing to preserve these memories. And of course, we appreciate what the veterans, all veterans, especially those that we're talking about from World War II, uh, have done to preserve our freedom and um, give us the ability to pursue the passions that we happen to pursue, which for many of us is to honor you. So again, um, we're thinking of you on December 7th and the anniversary. We're thinking of the events surrounding the anniversary. And we're always thinking about those veterans involved with the anniversary. And we always think about the veterans who are now defending us around the world and, and uh, on the island of Oahu and in Hawaii. So um, we just wanted to let you know that we are thinking of you from the great state of Rhode Island and the smallest state. And we wish you aloha. And we say mahalo for everything that you've done for us. So please take care and best wishes, please best wishes for 2021. So take care, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, um, Peter Shinkoda here. I'm an actor and I had the, uh, the privilege and the, the honor of getting to play Mr. Masaji Marimoto in Stacey Hayashi's movie, Go For Broke. Now, Mr. Masaji Marimoto is a hero, a pioneer. He was the first Asian American to ever graduate from Harvard Legal at that time, 1940s. That's a huge accomplishment. But more importantly, Mr. Marimoto, he was a member of the Hawaiian Emergency Morale Committee that was formed after the attacks on Pearl Harbor. Now, between the efforts of him and G-Man Robert Shivers of the FBI, they prevented the incarceration of 
thousands, tens of thousands of Japanese Americans in Hawaii following the attack, as well as generally keeping the peace in that state. Mr. Marimoto went on to join the army. He enlisted and eventually found his way to the MIS, the Military Intelligence Service, he served in the South Pacific. It's because of efforts of courageous men like him and other vets of World War II that I, as a Canadian and frequent resident of the United States, get to enjoy the privileges and the liberties that I do. That's not lost on me any moment of the day. I salute you, courageous men, from the bottom of my heart. In front of Tendola, there is the Musatello Hills. Its strategic position makes this peak contended in frequent battles between German soldiers and the Denise. A warm greeting to all. We are in Tendola, in the north of Tuscany, and precisely in the memorial buoys in honor of the Nisei soldiers who lost their lives in the liberation operation from the Nazi invasion. This is the exact spot where Bini Yashi was shot by a German sniper and lost his life. 60 years later, Sadaichi Kubota returned to this place to honor his companion. That moment inspired the citizens of Tendola to create a place of perennial memory for the heroic soldier Nisei. The last and decisive battle of Musatello had its hero, Daniel Inouye. Decisive and courageous was his action that in that fierce clash of 75 years ago cost him the loss of an arms. Rare of me, you can see Musatello Hills where uh, Daniel Inouye lost your arms in uh, uh, several battles. Hi, my name is Mario, best wishes from Tendola. Montignoso, northwest of the Italian peninsula, April 5, 1945. With the bold action, the 2nd and the 3rd Battalion of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team conquer an important position on the ridge that's run from Monte Carchio to Monte Folgorito. A breach was created in the German defenses of the 148th Infantry Division. It was 7 a.m. Once the ridge was conquered, the fighting ignited, with the German defending the vital artillery observatory of Monte Folgorito, a real ally of the German artillery of the Western Gothic Line. Around 5 in the afternoon, Sergeant General Kashiva glimpsed a path that called his soldier to the summit and noticed. Until then, Hay had been pinned down by German shooters with crossfire. The Nisei soldiers, with a very steep climb, surprised the enemy garrison, which abandoned the position of the cover of the observatory, while the personnel of the nearby central radio cave were captured. This action 
combine it with the captured of Georgia Hill by the 100 Battalion created the condition for the collapse of the line, which occurred a few days later with the capture of Montignoso, Massa, Carrara and Aulla. In June 2019, a small monument was placed on Monte Folgorito, designed by Davide del Giudice, Claudio Lombardi and Federico Santucci. The authorities of the municipality of Montignoso, the Apuan Park, and the reenactor of the Tyrrhenian Gothic line participated in the inauguration. There were numerous descents of the Nisei from the USA. Friends of Stacey Ayashi and part of the uh, UK Nisai reenactment group, and we wish to extend our warm welcome to you and all our very best from England to all the vets of the 442. Yeah, we're. Uh... We're really privileged to uh, be able to put on our class A's and pay our respects like this. So all the best to everyone. We'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Um, and uh, we're glad that we can be part of your um, commemorations for the um, 77th. Stay tuned. Cheers to you all. Cheers to you all. Cheers. Thank you for your services and for our future. Aloha, everybody. I'm now from Shinjuku Imperial Garden, which is my weekend running course. December 7th in Hawaiian time and December 8th in Japanese time always reminds us of many tragedies caused by the World War II. But nowadays, it also becomes a memorial day which reminds us, Japanese and Americans, of the power of reconciliation and importance of peace. While we are facing many common global challenges, including those caused by COVID-19, it is really crucial for all of us to cooperate and to unite each other to overcome those challenges. Let's remember the history of tragedies and reconciliation of us and pray for peace. And let's do just small things concrete what we can do for peace. Many a little make a miggle. Thank you and Mahalo Stacy for your small but courageous initiative for the peace on this Memorial Day. I also pray for peace and good health of all friends in Hawaii and all over the world from here Japan and hoping we can play the glory, enjoy golfing and Ram Honolulu Marathon with you again. Goodbye. Hi, my name is Johnny Shikawa, and I play Yoshimi, Hash, Hayashi, and Go for Broke, HTG, Triple V, and Misfit. And I wanted to say thank you to our World War II veterans for our freedom. Thank you. Aloha, 
This is Robert Chuj in Meskaren. I want you to say hello and mahalo to the one Puka Puka 442nd veterans. December 1944, it was cold and the war was lingering. The 442nd noticed that the children of Leskaren looked sad and malnourished. So, in order to warm their hearts, they decided to throw a Christmas party. I'm standing outside the chapel in which the party took place. Have a look. There was a big Christmas party right in the middle of the chapel. The soldiers had cut in the forest. And above all, lots of gifts, chocolate, peanut butter, rare food items such as, such as white bread. It was one of the most wonderful Christmas the children ever had. It's a famous story which everyone in the village knows. Not many people are left who were at the party, but its memory lives on. Thanks to the group, family and friends of Nisei veterans who visit us every five years to commemorate this event. And this, I must say, strengthens the ties that unite us. A big Mahalo. Aloha from the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center here on Maui at Gopher Grove Place. My name is Deidre Teagarden and I'm Melanie Agrabante. And we just want to say mahalo to all of the service men and women who give it themselves every day to ensure our freedom. If you want to learn more about the Nisei Veterans Memorial Center, you can visit our website at nbmc.org. So on this day, we say mahalo. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jack Maxwell, and I used to host a show on Travel Channel called Booze Traveler. When I found out we were going to Hawaii to film an episode, I was thrilled. Who doesn't want to go to Hawaii, right? It's peaceful and relaxing, and I figured I'd soak up the sun and listen to the surf, have some good tropical drinks. It was such a treat to be able to film one afternoon with the heroes, and that's not a word I use lightly, of the 442nd, just to listen to their stories and to realize how difficult it was for them because they looked like the enemy to prove their loyalty to the United States of America, which they did in such a way they would go on, as you know, I'm sure, to become the most decorated military unit in U.S. history, which is saying quite a bit. To be with those gentlemen, I know some of them are gone now, sadly, it is a memory I'll take with me forever. It was really an honor. Honestly, it was. And may they live forever in our heads and our hearts and our history books till the end of time. Thank you, Stacy, for making that possible. I hope to, uh, to see you and whoever's left again soon. It meant that much to me, and thank you for letting me be a part of this. Cheers. Hello, my name is Derek Mio, and I had the privilege of portraying Mr. Hiroshi Hershey Miyamura in the Netflix series, Medal of Honor. Hershey, hey, how's it going? Uh, it's been a while. Hope you and your family are doing well and staying safe. I uh, just want to say thank you to you and all the World War II veterans for your bravery and your courage and your sacrifice. It's something that this country and the world will never forget. And something that I'll never forget is getting to meet you and Joe. And I just want to say I'm so sorry to hear of his passing, but I know he'll be with you always. Um, Again, thank you very much. I hope everyone's families are staying safe and has a very happy holidays. Hope we can see each other soon. Take care. I am Jos Segers and I live in Belgium. My grandfather was taken prisoner of war on May 10, 1994. 
Thanks to all who have served and those who are still serving now. Because of them, I have my freedom now. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chad Yazal, and I play Akira Otani in the movie Go For Broke. I'd like to say thank you to the VVV, Kauai Territorial Guard, 100th Battalion, 442, MIS, and all of our World War II veterans for our freedom. Aloha. On behalf of General Patton, I'm his granddaughter, uh, and, and on behalf of the whole Patton family, I would like to acknowledge this December 7th and tell you how honored I am to be able to participate with you in the commemoration also of the end of the Second World War. My grandfather, when he parted from his Third Army, left them with a beautiful blessing, and I would like to quote him for you today. You have been baptized in fire and blood, and you have come out steel. Thank you for your courage. Thank you for your service. Thank you, those who cannot be with us, for your ultimate sacrifice or living a life continued in service. But thank you also for the sustenance that you give us all today as we endure the toughest times we've ever known. I'll be thinking of you this year as we all look forward to being unlocked. And I'll be hoping that we'll be together soon to be celebrating in person. But meanwhile, my little Zelda would also like to give you her thanks. Stacy, that was amazing. So cool, right? Oh, right. I just I brought just, tears wow. to my eyes. My I eyes. mean, I mean, these are my these friends, are my friends, you know, and you know, and these are ordinary, these are people, ordinary people, even though they're, even though maybe they're actors, maybe actors, you know, we're all, you know, we're all alone, alone together, alone together, you know, and it just kind of you know, reinforces, reinforces the idea that, the idea that we, we really we can't, can't, do, really anything can't do anything without each other, without each other. You, know, you know, like, like everybody, everybody had their, had phone. their phone, we were shooting, shooting in healthy mood and mode and but it just, it was really heartwarming to see. You know, like I put the call out and I asked everybody to just kind of film something and send it to me and we would air it. And yeah, that's what we got. Yeah, wow. That, thank you for, gosh, just organizing that and getting all of that together. I mean, we, we need to, this this needs to become a DVD or something, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I think so, because there are a lot of people who, who are going to miss this stream. I mean, like, I know um, veteran, D-Day veteran Norman Charles Shea is missing it. He's in Normandy, and it's very late for him. So uh, <laughs> the, his friend Marie, who sent the video, she was like, uh, well, we'll see it in the morning because he goes to bed at 9. <laughs> so... But yeah, okay, well, I think we um, we got the uh, the next video queued oh, the, up. Oh, the right? veterans. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So right before we show that, I would just like to kind of give a sort of background, like why we did that. Um, so on on December seventh, usually we are at Pearl Harbor, you know, and I've spent the you know the, I don't even know how many years of my life at Pearl Harbor. With Veterans and the Navy always plans it with the National Park Service. And um, but what most people don't know is that the other bases around the island, because all of Oahu was under attack on December seventh, you know they have their own they have their own ceremonies. And so there was one at Schofield. Um, I don't know if Bellows does one, but you know there there are things, right? And so this was going to be something that we were going to do with the 25th Infantry Division at Schofield. We also shot Go for Broke, you know out there for a week 
and in the rock quarry where the VVV, the real VVV busted rocks and, you know, did stuff. But, <laughs> and then, um, but yeah, I mean, in, you know, with COVID, you know, like we can't gather, right? And so I thought, well, we should still do something, right? And, and so uh, when Reen Mancho did her Zoom call for Veterans Day, and that was with the General Gerard of the 25th Infantry Tropic Lightning. So I was like, oh, we should totally do this for December 7th, you know? And it's ironic because, you know, with COVID, we can't gather, you know, so we can't involve anybody. But it's, it's weird because with COVID, since we can't gather, well, why don't we involve everybody, right? If we're, I'm here pretty much by myself, and then there are some ROTC cadets, <laughs> and then the, the, the guys in charge are inside the building watching, you know, the, our live feed. But, you know, it's, it was really cool to, uh, to be able to do that today. So this is a very unique thing. You know, whenever we, we do um, the December 7th, uh, commemorations at Pearl Harbor. Of course, it's the Navy, and you know we. It's always very sad because it's a sad day, you know. And, and I think we've had. I think we've all. We can all agree that we've had a very sad year. So we don't really need any more sad. <laughs> um, and of course, yes, it is a sad day, and we should commemorate it. But um, we should also realize that a lot of um, not so awful things happened, you know, since the war, and. And a lot of friendships were made, you know, from a very awful thing. And, and it's kind of weird that it's sort of the same thing happening right now. You know, like, you know, that, that was a world war. I mean, and now we're under a worldwide pandemic. So we all need to, you know, think of each other and uh, be thoughtful and, you know, look out for each other, really. So it's kind of weird. Yeah, it was it was really amazing to uh, just to hear everyone's stories and the, you know, from all over the world, right, from all these different countries. But the, the respect and admiration that they had for these, you know, these veterans, and it really, you know, it it, uh, it was just very touching. So, yeah, thanks. Yeah, for that. and to bring all those people together to this one platform for this one event is, it's, it's amazing. You know, this is this is incredible. So yeah it's pretty crazy and i mean I've, I've been to most places that were in the videos um i haven't seen uh, danny noy field at fort benning in georgia i would like to see that i would also like to see camp shelby where the 442 trained um in mississippi oh shoot we forgot to ask oh sorry um anyway uh yeah so the last thing that we have on our uh, agenda is actually the veteran roll call and salute and so you get to meet a lot of my friends <laughs> All right. My name is Albert Machad. I am a World War II veteran of the Pacific area. I was trained in communications. I was sent through Kwajalein, uh, Guam, Iwo Jima, and Okinawa. I manned the control terrors uh, in those areas. Uh, I also uh, volunteered as a radio operator on a B-17 bomber looking for Japanese activity that took place on Okinawa.
<clears throat> my name is Charles Norman Shea. Uh, I am a veteran of uh, World War II and uh, Omaha Beach, where I landed at uh, 6.30 in the morning on the 6th of June, 1944. Uh, at that particular time, EADF company had been selected to spearhead the invasion. We landed at uh, 0630 in the morning on the 6th of June, 1944. I was a member, a combat medic with F company. And uh, of course, uh, when we landed, we had many uh, Almost all of our officers were killed within the next hour or two, killed or wounded. Many of the sergeants were killed or wounded. And uh, when the uh, fiasco was over, we were practically a uh, not a combat unit anymore because we had lost all of our officers and most of our non-commissioned officers. You fight. My name is Tokyo Shihashi. I was from Pasadena, California, and I served in the Company A of the 100th Battalion, and I'd like to thank all of my buddies that were there. Folks call me Bill. I served under Admiral Nimitz at Pearl Harbor and live in Silver City, New Mexico. I will soon be 99 years old. And I'm a proud Navy veteran. Hi, everyone. My name is Sikoro Mano Kawahara. I was born in Wailuku, Maui, Hawaii. I belong to A Company, 100 Battalion, 442nd Regimental Combat Team. Just want to say hi to everyone. Mahalo. And aloha. Hello, Stacy. This is Jack Hamlin from Springfield, Missouri, with my granddaughter, Hattie Carpenter. We're happy to see you here, and thank you very much for inviting me to be filmed and to be with you. I'm sorry I can't be there, but I wish you all the happiness in the world. Thank you, Stacy. I love you. My name is Don Miata. I was a sergeant in Naval Company of the 100th Battalion, 442nd Regimental Combat Team. I was happy we were able to contribute to the sec success of World War II along with the Hawaiian buddies. I wish to thank our Hawaiian friends for our ingress into the armed forces. I'm thankful to those who made the supreme sacrifice, to those veterans who have passed on and to those who are still with us today. Thank you. Hello and aloha. I'm Yoshi Nakamura, born in the San Gabriel Valley of Southern California. I was a member of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, 3rd Battalion, Companies M and L. My saddest day of my life was December 7th, 1941. We were soon classified as enemy aliens, although we had Japanese faces and American hearts. And one of my happiest days was seeing the Statue of Liberty returning from Europe after World War II. I continue to be inspired by the go for broke spirit of the 100th Battalion, 442nd Regimental Combat Team, the most highly decorated unit in US military history. It is my privilege to say hello and thanks to you, 
from Whittier, California. Aloha and mahalo. Thank you. I am retired Master Sergeant Gilbert H. Howell. I fought in the primary with Maryland Marauders during World War II. 3,000 men volunteered for this dangerous and hazardous mission. We fought behind the Japanese lines for four, for four months and never lost a battle. I am one of eight Marauders still, still living. Congress just awarded our unit of Congressional Gold Medal. On December 7, 1941, I was stationed at Fort Clayton, Garden of the Panama Canal. I want to salute all veterans who have served in the military. Duty, honor, country. I'm Yoshiaki uh, Fujitani. And I served with the Hawaii Territorial Guard and the Varsity Victory Volunteers on December 1941. And uh, I always with the MIS instead of the 442. But uh, I have many friends who served in the World War II, and uh, I thought that uh, I should also serve in the army. So after the World War II had gone for about a year, uh, I joined the MIS. And the headquarters was in Camp Savage in Minnesota at, at that time. But uh, it was all right. I, uh, I uh, served for three years and then came back in 1946. So you went to Japan? Hmm? You went to Japan? You served in Japan? Yeah. Uh, I was uh, in the army for three years, from 1944, 45, 46. So in 1947, I went to Chicago on GI Bill and there I met my wife Tommy and we were married for 70 years. Wow, that's uh, long. So at my uh, age now, I'm 97. Uh, I'm one of the remainders of the 442 uh, friends and uh, the VVV. The VVV, yeah. There are not, not too many of us left. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My uh, recent friend was a classmate of mine, Richard Ando. Um, but I, I don't think he was in the HCG or VVV. Mm. But uh, he served in the uh, Navy, oh. the US Navy, and he was an officer. But uh, that was uh, later, you know. Mm, I see. Uh, well, we didn't qualify for commission, you might say. But uh, I, I got out of the army in the rank of uh, 
Master Sergeant. My name is Akira Tani. I volunteered for the Hawaii Territorial Guard on December 8th, and then thereafter for the, to the Triple V. After the Triple V for the 442, and after the 442, I did my uh, volunteer at 171st. And after the 171st, the MIS, which is the Military Intelligence Service. And thereafter, I went to Japan for the occupation of Japan. Aloha. I am Bob Lee from Oahu, Hawaii. On December 7th, 1941, I joined the Hawaii Territorial Guard after experiencing the attack on Pearl Harbor firsthand in person. While in the HTG, I was put into uniform with a gas mask, rifle, and clothing guarding local government facilities and patrolling the downtown Honolulu area during the blackout. After about three days, the Asian guardsmen were discharged by the military. Much to the guardsmen's great disappointment, most were born and raised in Hawaii like myself. And some were my friends from early childhood days playing in IA. With my last name being Lui, I too was discharged at first as my family name appeared to be Asian. However, the Hawaiian Territorial Guard officers who knew me pulled me back into the service. I was retained for service in the HTG until I was able to join the Navy in April 1942. On October 1st, in 2020, I turned 99 years old. That's it. Hey. Wow. Cool. That was. <laughs> this was so awesome, Stacy. <laughs> Congratulations yeah, I mean, on pulling this oh. all together. I know this is, <laughs> that's unbelievable. Was Shout really out cool. to Elliot, I mean, too. Yeah. Yes, Elliot Great Honda, style. man. Elliot Honda. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. Crew, of, crew two. of two. It was like yeah. me and Elliot. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, Stacy reached out to everyone and, um, and asked them to, you know, submit a video because she really wanted wanted this program to come together today so yeah we needed to honor yeah. our veterans yeah. to honor and our it was veterans. nice to give them oh, opportunity it was nice to give them to say hello themselves to say hello. you know um actually themselves. i wanted to point out uh three of the veterans uh, uh, with the photos, the veterans, they are, that was a photos. posthumous, you know, the U.S. They Senator are, Anna Kaka, you know, uh, Danny Noe, and, and Sparky uh, Matsunaga, you know, and they are, um, we, know, we miss them a lot. Um, yeah, we, we miss them a lot. But the other guys are still alive. But the other guys are still alive. Hmm. Yeah, so actually, we're kind of yeah, almost so at the end of our program. Kind of almost at the end but of I just wanted program. to thank everyone, but I just wanted to thank you know, like all the vets and the, vets, uh, the uh, people who sent in videos, and the kids, and the grandkids, and the friends of the veterans who had to film them. Because a lot because of it was like, it was well, like, in Hawaii, in Hawaii uh, it was, uh, I dropped, I dropped, dropped off my camcorder, or, or they shot, they it, shot with it with their phone, or, or you know, like however, however they could, they get, could it get it to us. us. So, so that's, that's how we did it. it. So this is really, really a group a project, project that, that was, was super, super cool. cool. We, did, we it did it together. Yeah. 
this is um yeah i just i just want to want to thank uh you know everyone for just for supporting for supporting this event today you know and uh and it's going to continue to stream if you want if you miss the beginning you know you can watch it you can go to the link you can pass the link on to your friends anybody who couldn't watch it today if you think there's someone out there who may appreciate this this program this uh this effort and um or who's sleeping just, right now yeah just, uh, just <laughs> and please, might want to see it later yeah please pass pass it along to them because it's it's so meaningful and and uh you know and our, our veterans are they're 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 just so so special and we have to they're precious we're losing them always them. yeah you know? you know i mean this year alone we've had we lost uh, Herb, Herb Yanamura, Yanamura, who's military, military intelligence, intelligence service. service. You know, he, you know, saved, he the saved the lives of over 300 people, people in the Battle of Okinawa. Okinawa. I mean, he I passed away in January. January. Uh, Dr. Dr. Fujio Fudge Matsuda, who was, was the first Japanese American president of a major university, which is UH, um, he passed away uh, this year. Um, Don Seki, who lost an arm, he lost his left arm actually so he and senator Inouye would joke that they could share a pair of gloves you know we lost him you know it's just i mean it's of course it's that time you know they're uh they are 95 you know the young guys are 95 um and as you can see you know like uh, the vvv guys are like 99 you know yoshiaki fujitani he was the youngster he was 97 you know um he also lost his wife you know, that's why he mentioned, wow, we were married, you know, 70 years. Yeah, so it's, it's been a tough year. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, I'd like to thank everybody. Um, so, yeah, all the vets, everybody who sent in videos, um, the kids and the grandkids of the vets, uh, everyone who participated, uh, participated, speakers General Bramlett and Hershey Miyamura, Medal of Honor recipient, um, all my friends who sent in messages from around the world, you are awesome. Please stay safe and hope to see you soon. Um, Ratsi Cadet Olsen, who sang Hawaii Ponui, UH President David Lassner, and Colonel, uh, UH Ratsi Colonel Melander, um, and outgoing Lieutenant Colonel Dan Gregory. I was like, oh, you're Lieutenant Colonel Dan. <laughs> um, and also the US Army Museum of Hawaii at uh, for Derusi, because actually our program was not always going to be here. It was going to be at um, the Army Museum, but they don't have Wi-Fi. So, and also they're closed today. So they were going to come in and run power for us. And it was just like, eh, it's easier to just broadcast from UH where there is Wi-Fi. Um, but Nevin Field, thank you so much. And the U.S. Garrison, because they were really trying to bend over backwards to accommodate us. Um, and let's see. Oh, yeah. And so go for broke. There's a gopher broke stamp coming out next year and Whitey Yamamoto is the guy on it, you know, and he was a fixture at the U.S. Army Museum. You know, like he would volunteer there all the time. When you would walk in, he would greet you. Um, he passed away a few years ago. Um, he was a very generous and kind soul. Um, and of course, Jake, we'd like to thank you for playing our national anthem and the 100th Battalion, 442nd Regiment for posting the colors. I mean, I don't know if you noticed the colors, but my all their battle streamers and their eight presidential unit citations, they're on it. So the colors are just amazing, you know? And uh, so Jordan Kagehiro and Command Sergeant Major Jerry Walden, Bishop Fujitani and Chaplain Joe Isop, who is doing our benediction. So that's after I stop talking. <laughs> and Jake Wheat for program direction. And Elliot Honda, you know, and, and myself, haha, for all the editing and filming of the National Anthem, but more Elliot because he actually knows how to use Premiere and <laughs> Final Cut Pro. <laughs> I was sending him all these files and I was like, why doesn't this play? Um, Jacqueline House and the Mighty Mo and Dave, the Navy vegan who helped us. Um, thank you to our World War II vets for our freedom. And we say, Okage Samade, we are who we are because of you. And with that, I guess let's finish it and we'll do the uh, benediction from Chaplain Joe Weissup. It is an honor to be asked to provide the benediction for this uh, ceremony. You know, I've heard it said that in history, we recall events that live forevermore. 
that we recall as in tonight they fall, things that happen on Hawaii's shore. So let's remember Pearl Harbor as we go to meet the foe. Only there's something magical about the waters and the ocean breeze of the islands that changes that foe into a friend, that turns bitter rivals into brothers and sisters, and that binds wounds that no earthly surgeon could hope to. In the two generations that have passed since that fateful day, these warriors have provided an example for the world of how peace can be achieved. And so let us remember Pearl Harbor, not just for the cunning and the valor and the heroism shown on that day, but for the tremendous change of heart, the aloha that has been shown between these warriors in the days since. Let us remember Pearl Harbor for the spirit of unity that this nation desperately needs. So I invite you to pray with me in your tradition as I pray in mine. Let us pray. Mahalo keakua. Thanks be to God for his grace and his mercy. Surprise us once again by reaching into our very beings and lighting a flame of remembrance so that we can be inspired not only by the events that happened on that fateful day in 1941, but by what these warriors have meant to us ever since. And so that when our children ask, we can hand that flame to them and see them bring it into the future, breaching the darkness and lighting the mainland, both theirs and ours. Go, be a light unto the world. Amen. Yeah. So, so that was Chaplain Joe Isaac. He was the chaplain for the 100th, 442. Um, I don't know if he's still with them, but that's okay. And so now we'll have the closing. Well, we'll post, we'll retire the colors. So that will be the 100th, 442 color guard. Stacey, congratulations. What an amazing program. Oh, no. Thank you for helping. For helping. No, I, I want to, uh, everyone watching, everyone <laughs> watching, I, I just want to say, um, I just want to say, you know, if you want to find out more about how you can support, you know, how you can support our, our veterans, uh, you know, especially like with our Nisei veterans and the Go For Broke, um, uh, <laughs> you know, um, organizations and things like that. You know, Stacy is such a great resource. She is truly amazing. Um, you know, you can also see her movie, support all her efforts to, uh, you know, to share the story and to continue to, um, to share, share the, the, uh, the legacy of these Nisei veterans, you know, with the younger generation. And I think that is, uh, just amazing so yeah stacy like how, how can they get like more in touch with you if people want to learn oh more gosh more? um well so uh i guess they could write to me on the website go for broke movie.com yeah 
Yeah, we, we hope to do another movie. Ha ha, Jake will help me produce it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll let you know more later. <laughs> No, but Stacy, yeah. thank you for just your commitment, your passion, uh, your your just endless energy, you know, that you put into your work um, for our veterans. Thank you so much for all that you do. It's really uh, to, well to be here. Thank you for helping me. You know, I mean, for those of you guys who don't know, so Jake wrote the theme song for my movie, right? It's called Go for Broke, and he actually wrote it. Like ten years before we actually, or oh, seven years before we even shot the movie, you know. And <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. You're awesome. Thank you. All right, well, well, everyone, yeah, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. This was, this was truly amazing, such a gift, and you know, and uh, and the silver lining is, you know, none of this could not have happened, you know, without without everything that we're going through right now yeah it like wouldn't have happened because we would all have so, been at the harbor like normal every year you know what i mean yeah so. so you know thank you thank you for sharing this and remember you can watch it over and over you can share it with other people, <laughs> so make sure you yes do please that. do yeah all right thank you so much yeah thank you everyone okay. aloha everybody god, Mahalo. god bless america and the world yes thank you god bless america god bless the world